Welcome to yet another project, this time motorizing a Bandai Tech Sir Handle to run on 9mm gauge rails, the gauge used by N scale in addition to HON30, HOE, and 009 narrow gauge models. The build began by removing the original Bandai chassis and rear magnet mechanism. The donor chassis is from the Bachmann Scarloe HON30 model, released in late 2015. It's a single piece chassis with split copper contacts and wheel wipers on all six wheels. Since I bought my chassis from Bachmann's parts department and had no idea of how it actually went together, I fitted and glued the motor to the chassis, though it's intended to be a friction fit without any adhesive as the motor prevents the factory Scarloe foot plate from being installed or removed. If you have a factory Scarloe and you're not modifying it, don't glue the motor. The Bandai shell is a simple two-piece arrangement, a steel body and a plastic foot plate with splashers. Each buffer beam is a separate plastic piece. I considered a couple of alternatives, including mounting the Bandai model to the Scarloe foot plate, but this only emphasized a slightly larger scale of the Bandai model. Modifying the foot plate to clear the Scarloe chassis was relatively simple. A few cuts with a small hobby saw, and some small drilling with a pin vise allowed removal of the excess material. After dressing the newly cut edges, the foot plate slid right on, followed by the completely unmodified steel shell. The brass details on the dome needed a tab removed from the bottom, but this was the only other modification to get to this point. Sir Handel's smoke box, which extends through the foot plate, needed some material shaved from the bottom. And with that slight modification, the smoke box, foot plate, and steel shell came together. The Bachmann model is fitted with a pair of well-detailed cylinders which fit perfectly under the Bandai model after removal of the cast-on detail from the foot plate. For better or worse, I could not find a single paint that seemed to imitate the electric purplish-blue Bandai color of Sir Handel, so I just put the nearest match onto it and called it good before losing any details or ruining the plastic. The initial tests were a success and the only weakness I could find was a lack of weight over the driving wheels. Even though the shell is steel, most of its weight is over the cab area and therefore that weight is over the rear trailing axle and not the drive axles. When I get around to it, I'll put some lead weight in the boiler area above the motor and the problem should be solved. The buffer beams came next. The gap in the Bandai beams were filled with styrene and smoothed in with hobby putty. And despite the probability of this all going wrong, I drilled the center of each buffer beam to glue the Bachmann coupling hooks on. And it worked! The Bachmann buffers were also fitted to the front beam only for simplicity's sake and also for safety's sake, because if anything's going to break, it's only going to be on the front beam, not the rear beam where nobody ever sees it and it's not going to be a pain in the neck. The coupling hooks and rear buffers were blackened with a Sharpie pen with surprisingly good results. The slot in the Bandai roof was also given a similar treatment as it was first plugged with styrene and then filled with putty. And no matter how many times I filed and re-puttied it, I could not get it perfectly smooth, so I'll stay like this, I don't care, I'm happy. At this point the model is essentially done, but the mounting system still had to be sorted out. I decided that the metal body and the plastic footplate would be best as one piece, and so I first glued the plastic bits together, gave it time to dry, and then applied JB Weld to the areas where the plastic and steel would be joined. And of course the steel areas are scraped of paint first to aid adhesion. After the JB Weld had dried after a day, the excess was cut, sanded away, and the chassis was test fitted for the, I don't know, thousandth time. Mounting the chassis permanently remained the last problem. Now after a few failed attempts and a lot of trimming later, the screw finally slid through the chassis with no binding, lined up with the smoke box, and I clearanced the cylinder assembly so the screw head would sit flush with it. I also painted the mounting lugs on the smoke box with white paint to use as a motion target reference. Whether this will work in the future is another story, but for the present, Sir Handel works and looks great as is. Subscribe to keep in touch with us on YouTube, and don't forget to check us out on Twitter as well.